Hey there, it's been a while, I know, but I think I came up with a pretty good add-on and it's time to let you know about it. So what is Animazing? Uh, Animazing is packed with a bunch of animation tools and it comes with a much improved in-placer that you can use with any armature you have. Many people ask for this feature after using my previous add-on. So if you are only interested in checking out the new in-placer, feel free to skip ahead to the root bar reversal section. Plus there is a little surprise waiting for you later in the video, so definitely stick around. Alright, I think that's enough for the intro, let's dive into the details. First we have Timeline Ranger. This was a standalone free add-on that I shared on my Gumroad page, but it was buggy as hell, so I improved it a lot and integrated it into Animazing. It just organizes the timeline according to the length of the selected animation, so no more manual adjustments needed, such as going to the last frame of the animation and pressing Ctrl N to set that frame as the last frame then pressing home to view the keyframes neatly etc. So it's a time saver, especially if you import lots of animations into Blender like me. By the way I called it Timeline Arranger but it also works for the Dop Sheet Editor and Graph Editor. And lastly you have this option here, if you don't want to frame all the keyframes just uncheck this and you're good to go. Next we have Animation Scrubber. You know one of the most common actions during animating is going back and forth between keyframes, trying to understand the flow of the animation to ensure the right feeling is captured. Right? So with the animation scrubber, you get to take control of the playhead in the timeline simply by moving your cursor, which makes it easier to play the animation back and forth and get a better idea where to improve the animation. In fact, you can have a similar functionality by pressing shift and right click in the timeline and moving your cursor. That's a built-in feature in Blender, but in that case you are limited to the timeline area and you have to keep pressing those buttons. Compared to that, Anim Scrub is a modal operator, activated by a single button and deactivated by right clicking the rest is just moving your mouse. Also you have this sensitivity option here to adjust the playhead speed to your liking. Another feature of Animazing is Auto Frame which is a graph editor tool. Okay, Blender has a problem of not remembering the state of how you view a curve in the graph editor. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's say I'm polishing this animation, right? So I make some changes on the Z rotation of the foot controller like this. And now I want to make some changes on the Z location of it. When I click on the channel, I can't see the curve directly. Why? Because the values on the Y axis are substantially different, right? So what do I do? I frame the whole curve, then zoom in for the area I'm working on. And if I go back to the previous channel, the same thing happens. I don't see the curve. Blender just doesn't remember how I was viewing this curve so I have to frame all then zoom in and it goes like that forever right at this point you can say well why don't you use the normalize option it makes the lowest value minus one and the highest value one for all the curves so you wouldn't have such a problem because the y-axis never changes well I don't like it to be honest it feels counterintuitive somehow and I haven't seen anyone using it either I think blender developers are aware of this because they added a new functionality with 3.6 if you press alt and middle click on a channel it automatically frames the whole curve it's a step closer to the ultimate solution I guess but still a long way to go. Okay then, what does the auto frame offer? It just automatically brings the curve into view and zoom into the specific area you're working on. You can use the pie menu or you can assign a shortcut for it using this button here. The shortcut for the pie menu is F and you can change it or disable it here in the preferences under the menu of graph editor generic. This frame range option allows you to specify the portion of the curve you want to view. If set to 15, it will display a range of 15 frames to the left and right of the current frame and showing that segment of the curve. If set to 5, it will be more zoomed in, providing a closer view. While testing the add-on, I noticed something weird happens. Suppose you have used Mixamo's Blender add-on to create a contour rig for a Mixamo armature. After doing that, if you want to use auto frame, it acts weird, but the issue doesn't lie with the auto frame functionality itself. You can understand that if you try to use frame selected option, it doesn't work either. So there seems to be an issue with either the Mixam or the Blender itself, as it's not updating the curve data maybe, I don't know. To resolve this issue, try selecting a keyframe on the curve, press G, then right click, and that somehow solves the problem as you can see. Next, we have Precision Transform. In Blender, to precisely move an object along the x-axis, you will press G, then X, then type in the value, right? But let's say you also want to do that on the y-axis. In that case, you will press G, then Y, then type in the value, and so on. So if your workflow demands such precise transforms, you can achieve them more easily by using Precision Transform. As you can see, having dedicated buttons for each scenario is pretty handy. Of course, it can also be used for animation purposes. One little tip before we move on. You can go to edit mode, select the vertex you like, put the 3D cursor there using the shift S shortcut. Then you can come back to object mode and set the origin point to the 3D cursor's position. 
Now you can rotate your object around the point, you know, just a helpful trick to remember when you need to rotate an object around a specific point. Next, we have share keyframes. This one has a bit of an niche use case maybe, but you'll know it when you need it for sure. Let's say you are animating a character and you notice that something seems off with the knees. Perhaps they appear to be floating in certain parts. Probably you didn't animate them enough, right? Maybe you forgot to adjust the knee pose at certain points while animating the hips controller or the foot controller. I think you got the point. Typically, in such a case, you will select the controllers and press I for every keyframe the hips controller has, creating markers on the knee pulse so that you can go to those frames and animate the knee pulse to solve that floating issue. Okay, what share keyframes does then? It automates that process. You just select the bone or bones to which you want to add those missing keyframes and then select the bone with more keyframes last, okay? I call this bone the source bone. Click on the button and it will figure out where to add those keyframes and add them for you. If you want to do that for all the bones, just select a single bone and use this all bones button instead. Now all the bones will have keyframes at the same frames as your selected bone. And lastly, if you want to add keyframes only within a specific range, select a range like this on your source bone and check this option here. It will now only add keyframes within that range if necessary. And finally, we have root bone reverser. It just simplifies the process of making animations in place with just a few clicks. Let's say you have an animation like this and want to make it in place. First, make sure your transform orientation is in local. Then select your main controller that moves your character in space. In this case, it's this hips controller. So it moves towards the Z direction, right? Okay, now I'm gonna select the root bone with pressing shift. Root bone must be selected last. I'm gonna check the Z axis here and that's it. It automatically reverse animates the root bone so your character stays in place. Let's use it for rotation also. It's basically the same process. Okay, it's the Y axis I'm interested in in this case. Selecting the root bone, checking the Y axis here. And as you can see, the character looks at the same direction while doing that turning motion. This is really handy to use it in this way in a game engine. Now let's use it with a different armature and also discuss another use case. Okay, we can create the in-place version of it easily, right? And when we do that, seems like the character slides on the ground. Why? Because this torso controller is still moving even though the character landed on the ground. You might not want that. Maybe you want the root bone to be reverse animated only if the character is in the air. You can achieve that by using this only for the selected range option here. So we can select the range between 20 and 26 on the source bone and only reverse animate the root bone in that range. Well, it kind of looks weird, but it's up to your decision making at this point. You can undo the process and experiment with different scenarios that suits your needs. You can even select multiple ranges as many as you want. And only in those ranges the root bone will be reverse animated. After making your animation in place you can export it using this only deform buzz option here. We don't need lift bones, let's uncheck that. And let's import the animation that we just exported and have a look at it. As you can see, it's just a proper in-place animation that you can use in your preferred game engine. So all in all, I think Root Bone Reversal will definitely save you some time and effort. By the way, a quick reminder, you can assign shortcuts for any of the buttons of Animazing or add them to your quick favorites. Also, if you don't remember the order in which you need to select bones, simply hover over the button and see if it helps you to get coin. Alright, Animazing will be available for just $5 to download on Gumroad. Is it worth $5? Well, in my opinion, absolutely yes, but of course you are free to make that decision for yourself. The link for the add-on is in the description. As for the surprise I mentioned in the intro, if you donated any amount for my previous add-on in Placer, regardless of whether it was $1, $4 or more, you're gonna get an amazing for free. So if you made a donation, you don't need to buy it, just check your email and you'll find the information there to download it for free. I just deeply appreciate generous people, so I wanted to make this little gesture for you guys. Okay, if you encounter any bugs, have questions or want to request new features, feel free to send an email. I would like to add new features to make this add-on even better. Maybe I can use the community section of this channel to exchange ideas with you about those. Also, I'm planning to upload new videos moving forward. I think the first one will cover how to manually reverse animate the root bone. So if you're interested, be sure to subscribe. And I think that's all. See you in the next one.